I'm uh, Doug Wells, your National Membership Director for DAV. Thank you so much for coming out to the membership seminar today. Uh, I just want to start off by saying how awesome it is to be back in front of everybody um, and being able to give some actual high fives instead of the COVID high five. So good stuff. I've missed you all, truly. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things uh, just to get through uh, before I kick off the presentation. Um, just wanted to make sure and maybe you all could help spread the word. We put out a couple of push notifications on the convention app and we're sharing some of that information in the sessions, but uh, I just don't want to get to Tuesday morning and there be an issue with uh, folks thinking that they should be able to vote and they can't. So um, as you're talking to our comrades running around the convention, if they're, uh, and it's fine that it, that it can say member, if their credentials say member on their badge, that's totally fine unless they think that they're supposed to be voting. So if we got to Tuesday and had to go to a roll, roll call vote um, and they think that they're supposed to be voting, that their, their badge should reflect either delegate or alternate delegate. Um, so uh, certainly we don't want people that should be voting, uh, you know, closed out uh, from doing so just because of a clerical error or, error or something like that. So the remedy is just to bring their chapter commander or adjutant to registration or their department commander or adjutant and we can get that squared away with the, uh, you know, when we check the, uh, the delegate forms, if we don't have the appropriate form, we can get that at that time, okay? Um, so there's still plenty of time to do that, but just uh, share that information for me if you would. Uh, also want to take a quick moment to introduce the interim membership committee. Uh, so to my left, Steve Presswich and Eric Huckabee, and to my right, Helen Parr. Uh, Tank Mizio was not able to join us at National Convention this year, but if you could, please give the interim membership committee a round of applause for all the work they do all year long. Also, uh, I want to take a moment to recognize a couple of very special folks to me. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, my membership manager from our headquarters in Cold Spring does a fantastic job of running registration for us every year, Robin Higgins. Colonel Robin Higgins. So, <laughs> U.S. Army retired. I'll give her you an oorah. <laughs> and then, of course, Heather Kohlmeyer, our membership portal expert who's uh, just in there to the left. If you have questions about the membership portal, uh, she is your person to talk to. So give Heather a round of applause. She loves it when I point her out to people, I'm telling you why. Um, but again, I am Doug Wells, your national membership director. The information that you see on the screen here uh, is my direct info. Uh, so if you email me at dwells, dwells at dav.org, um, That'll come right to me. And that number, uh, 442-2060, that is my direct line. Uh, happy to have you reach out to my membership specialists. Robin uh, blocks and tackles for me all day, too. Um, best staff in the DAV in the membership department uh, at headquarters. And I just, uh, we couldn't get it done every single day without them. So uh, some of them might watch this seminar. So can we give them a round of applause as well? So I uh, just really wanted to, you know, uh, take a moment to, again, thank all of you for being here, being present, uh, and getting us back to the good work of the DAV. Uh, it, was, it was awful not being able to have convention last year in Dallas like we'd wanted to for our centennial. So this isn't how we all imagined it, but I think it's uh, turning out pretty terrifically. So, um, all right, let's get into it. Bunch of stuff to share. Um, I just wanted to talk briefly about March Madness. Uh, so that you can all start going back and strategizing within your departments and chapters. Uh, so this is really kind of driven from the department level. Uh, so it's something that all the chapters can take pride in with respect to their department. Uh, so when you start hearing about the basketball tournaments, uh, the NCAA tournament, Sweet 16, all that stuff, I want that to be kind of a psychological uh, trigger to say, okay, it's time to start thinking about making goal for the membership year, right? So the membership year, remembers, runs from, uh, from July 1st to June 30th. Um, so all of the awards that we do, all that good stuff, all the reporting we have to do for this event, all revolves on that uh, sort of uh, fiscal year that we call the membership year. 
So um, a lot of times chapters and or departments, you know, they, they just historically really didn't start to ramp up the recruitment effort to make goal until May, sometimes June. Um, and of course, then they would struggle at the end to make goal. So I want folks to start thinking of it. Come out of the holidays, get those holiday bills paid off, whatever we got to do before we start tackling folks. Uh, but I think when the tournaments start, that's a good time to really start ramping up uh, that recruitment effort. So just wanted that to be something we could psychologically key off of. And it's been terrific. So the key about this, though, is it only counts digital memberships. That's the other thing we want to promote, right, is getting people signed up online. You'll probably hear me say this two or three times during the, the presentation. All the numbers tell me when I look at the metrics, two things happen when people sign up with a credit card online. One, there's a greater proclivity for them just to pay for the full life membership up front. And two, it's fire and forget, right? So we get those installment payments. We don't have to worry about folks sending a ch paper check into us and we don't have to worry about sending them uh, something in the snail mail to remind them to, to pay their dues. Uh, so there's a, a much greater propensity for them to convert to full life membership if they do choose to pay for installments. So that's really what this is kind of designed to do. Um, so there's a couple of different awards that a department can, can get. Uh, the tournament champion, so if they go through the brackets, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment, uh, you know, week to week to week without being knocked out, um, they would be the, the tournament champion. But if you happen to be in a department that has a, an off couple few days um, and are bounced out of the tournament, that's okay. You can still get back in it. The, the department that has the greatest total amount of recruits online is eligible for the department MVP. Uh, the obelisk there that you see. And also for individual recruiters, uh, anybody that, um, that recruits 25 or more members is eligible for one of these great iPads. And there's been a couple of years where I've only given one or none. So during that couple few week period that we have the tournament go and we announce that, make sure you're sharing that with your folks when it comes out to you. Um, you know, the, the memberships that come in electronically during that time frame. Uh, are incentivized in this fashion. Uh, there's also a couple of gift cards that we give to the departments to help offset any type of administrative cost. So, you know, organic recruiting, hopefully getting out, um, uh, you know, talking to folks, getting them signed up. We want to get back to that, right? Um, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some other recruiting metrics in a minute, but we cannot do this without your help. Um, we can do a lot of it, but we can't do it all and we can't meet our goals without grassroots recruiting, right? So higher conversion rates, organic recruiting, any online platform can be used. Make sure you run back and, and uh, share this with, uh, with your folks. So um, this year's uh, tournament champions were Virginia, was the, the actual tournament champion. Great job, Virginia A. And uh, North Dakota uh, was the MVP, I believe, right? So yeah, great job, North Dakota. So, um, you know, terrific job on, the, on their parts. Uh, we presented those trophies at, uh, at uh, our commanders and adjutants uh, meeting here in June. Uh, so it's always exciting to have them come up. But, but again, this will start again uh, next March. Uh, and I just want you guys to be prepared for that. Uh, we've had many, many different people be very close to winning, come close to winning. You don't have to be a big guy with all sorts of muscle as a department in order to win this job or win this contest. Um, so we're, we're trying to give you all the tools as recruiters to introduce uh, DAV to folks who may not be aware, what our members are, who they are, what they look like. Um, so we've had member highlight videos on volunteers, on small business owners. We have one now on a service officer that I'm going to premiere for all of you here today. Um, but these are tools that are out there on DAV's YouTube channel that I want you to really go out there and explore in addition to the stuff that's in the members only section, the, the webinars and things that we have posted there, not only for membership, but for voluntary services. Our Inspector General has some there. Uh, take advantage of all that stuff. Use that stuff in your, in your chapter meetings to break up the monotony of those meetings, right? To change it up from the Robert's Rules of Order and old business, new, new business. Share some of that stuff. And it's, a lot of it's quick hitting. It's all designed for social media, right? Um, <clears throat> for the most part. So, uh, you know, and just encourage members to go out and look at that stuff on their own. This is great tools um, to have in your recruiting quiver here. So 
Uh, without further ado, let me uh, premiere this member, new member highlight video for you. So uh, I was going to introduce Mario, but he introduced himself. So why don't you stand up and let us give you a round of applause, Mario. <laughs> Thank you so much for all your continued service to your fellow veterans and the DAV, Mario. Thank you. Uh, so th these types of videos are, are um, uh, again, designed to introduce us to the to the general public out there who may not understand who we are and what we're about and the folks that make up our, our ranks. Um, so please, if you know somebody that you think uh, is representative of DEV, what we're about, um, you know, and the whole eclectic mix that we have, we've had a Congressional Medal of Honor winner, uh, volunteer, service officer, uh, small business owner, uh, please point that, those folks out to me so we can consider them for this type of uh, endeavor. Certainly I want you all to use this stuff as you're introducing DAV to folks that you run into or that you're scouting out from the hot list, things of that nature. Um, these are great tools for you to use. So we talked a little bit earlier about digital tools uh, and I want to remind you all of Recruit a Warrior. Now uh, for those of you that may not know, DAV uh, is in a kind of a midst of a in the midst of a generational technological transformation. Uh, so we put the final nail in the coffin of the old legacy membership system uh, to roll out our customer relations management tool, um, which will combine all of DAV's legacy functions into one uh, system that uh, you know, lets us talk to one another a little better, right? 
Um, so we've had to take Recruiter Warrior offline for just a moment. I will shoot out an email letting everybody know when that's available again. Uh, but this just does an amazing job. You can just go to dav.org slash warrior. And again, I think I was remiss in not saying that uh, this presentation will be available uh, on, the, on dav.org after convention. You'll be able to find it and review this stuff so you don't need to take pictures of, of slides necessarily, unless you want to. Uh, but um, you go to dav.org slash warrior, you put in your email address that you signed up with, it kicks you out a personalized recruitment link that you can share via Facebook, Twitter, email, text, however you want to share it. People click on that link, they go to a form, the, the membership application, and it automatically gives you as the recruiter credit for that recruitment. So not only do we do extra special types of, of uh, activities in the fall, we usually try to do like a $1,000 um, Recruiter Warrior Challenge, that sort of thing, right? So, um, you know, in addition to that, you still earn your regular DAV points to use to buy the awesome swag over at, uh, over at the store, okay? So cha-ching, right? It's, uh, it's doubly uh, awesome that way. So if for some reason you did not sign up with um, an email address, if you signed up old school with the paper application, that's fine. Just give us a call and the email that you'll get will direct you to do this, to give us a call at national headquarters and we'll ultimately be able to set you up with your profile and get you squared away. Um, and that's the number, the 888 number there, is the number to the membership department at headquarters. So again, this is down right now, but we'll, we're going to work hard to get it up as soon as we possibly can, and I'll shoot out an email blast letting everybody know uh, when that happens. In the meantime, you can go to dev.org slash join from your phone, from your pad. You just have to be conscious of putting in your own, um, your sponsor data so you get credit for that recruitment, okay? Uh, it doesn't automatically attribute credit um, like Recruiter Warrior does but it is totally good. Um, another question that our recruiters often get is why do, and I've shared this before, but since it's been so long since we met, I thought it was important to share some of this stuff again. Uh, why, do, why does DAV have membership dues? Why don't you, know, you give free memberships like some other organizations? Well, uh, that's a, it's a complex answer to that, but there's also a simple answer to that. It's because I've never seen another organization that takes in membership dues and then pushes them out again every year into the communities where those members live to serve members in those communities, to close the gap between the veterans' benefits that they've earned and what the reality on the ground is, right? That's what DAV does. That's our sweet spot. So membership dues are, go a long way towards assisting with that. So here's just a quick, like, 45-second video. If you get that question, don't try to come up with your own answer. Boom, you just shoot this link to them and let them watch it and they'll have it. Military service ingrains in all of us that we're stronger together. And membership in DAV builds upon that precept by leveraging our strength in numbers to empower us through camaraderie and legislative action. But did you know that you're also helping fellow veterans with your DAV membership dues? Well, part of your dues helps produce DAV Magazine, which keeps you informed about topics important to you and your family. A portion of these funds are also redistributed to your departments and chapters to directly support DAV programs and services offered in your community. Membership dues can help purchase vehicles that transport veterans to and from VA medical appointments. They can provide supplies for service officers and support initiatives to assist homeless veterans. And they can be used to support our incredible network of volunteers as they help take care of those who served our nation. But most importantly, your local DAV leaders help decide how these funds are used as they identify the greatest needs of the veterans in your area. DAV's programs and services are free to those who use them, and membership dues are one way we all help ensure DAV continues to be there in your community, fulfilling our promises to the men and women who served. Thanks for making a direct impact in the lives of fellow veterans. For more information, check out our annual report here. By the way, I just want to give uh, a quick round of applause to our communications department that just such, does such a fantastic job in helping us produce all this stuff. So just real quick, wanted to remind everyone too about recruitment points. Um, you know, so another reason I talk about signing folks up online, if you can get them signed up online, get that full life membership, you know, you get three recruitment points right away right? 
um, instead of the one and then the other two come in later on after they pay off. So um, it's just an easier route to go if, if you're getting the three points uh, off the top. Uh, remember, a couple years ago, we made the decision to expire points. We had points sitting on the books to the amount of you know two or three points that per member that could not be used to buy anything. There wasn't anything that cheap uh, in the in the store to buy, and they just you know for whatever reason those folks uh, didn't recruit anymore or whatever. But essentially, a point is a buck, and when you start accruing a bunch of those on your bottom line, now all of a sudden you got red in your ledger and. Uh, that's never a good thing. So we don't want to. We don't want to do that. So like most rewards program, this is a, uh, you know, pretty common. Uh, we're on a three-year rolling basis. These points will expire. So uh, make sure that you're using your points as you get them. I mean, if you want to save up, you know, a, a decent amount, just make sure after a couple of years uh, you're spending them, okay? Or we might lose them. And also remember, you can go to dav.trophyawards.com uh, and you know browse the catalog there work with our procurement department at headquarters and they can help you expend points that way as well, okay? Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the recruiting picture and this circles back to what I said about not being able to do it on our own. And I know this slide might be a little busy and a little hard to see from here so you can see it if you look at it online a little better, but you know, it's been a tough, tough couple of years for recruitment for DAV because of COVID and whatnot. I just came from the membership awards luncheon um, you know, with, in a room with a bunch of folks that, you know, found a way to, to overcome that adversity and still excelled uh, in their recruitment efforts. Um, so network with those people, uh, bend their ear about what they're doing to be successful. Uh, I always try to share as much of that as I can uh, in the very compressed and limited amount of time that I have with you all, but certainly you've got a ton of members in this audience right now that are premier recruiters that would love to talk to you about what they do every single day for recruitment. Um, but it has been a tough couple of years. Uh, we haven't made goal for a couple of years. We, year before last, unfortunately, we set a very uh, aggressive goal for ourselves, and I think we were trending towards making it. The first quarter was looking awesome. We dropped our February solicitation mailing at the exact same time the pandemic was hitting. So about the same time uh, people were getting our solicitations, they were hearing on the news that uh, toilet paper was gone. So. Um, you know, certainly that created a little bit of a, a little bit of a panic, and and I think it definitely impacted our, our return on our mailing. Uh, this most recent mailing, this past February, uh, showed up. You know, again, signs of life and was a lot better. Uh, still not where we'd like to see it, but at the end of the day, um, I need your help to get us over the hump. So right now, we uh, we typically have about a 75, 25 percent split of where our new members come from. Um, you know, 75% through national resources and then 25% uh, out at, uh, in the field. So uh, I'd like to turn those numbers on their head. I'd like it to be about 50-50, and it can be. You all know the, the, the prospects, the member prospects that are viable for recruiting much more than I do. Um, I give you the hot lists and you can talk to these folks and interview them and invite them to meetings and offer them services. I'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute, but um, you can add that personal touch. And the reason, it, even beyond that, even beyond just the recruitment numbers and sustaining us as an organization, that it's ever more important that you all recruit folks is that all of our leaders, every single one of them, were not recruited on a digital ad. They were not recruited in a, um, in a mailing right, in a solicitation mailing. They were recruited by somebody like you, bringing them into the organization, taking them to meetings, taking them to events, making sure that their claim was squared away, making sure that they were getting to and from their medical appointments, and mentoring them in the organization, introducing them to what it means to be a junior vice commander, a senior vice commander, a commander, an adjutant, a treasurer, right? All that good stuff, and what the important roles, how those important roles impact the lives of disabled veterans and their families every single day. Um, so it's, it's up to you to help continue to establish our future leaders. And I can't tell you how much from the bottom of my heart I appreciate you doing that. Um, and we just hopefully we can get beyond, um, you know, beyond this pandemic and totally put it behind us so we can get back to, to pressing the, fl the flesh and, and making sure that we're uh, doing what we got to do to get uh, those quality folks into, into 
positions that are helpful to the organization and, you know, that veteran service veteran mentality. Um, we, of course, you know, Recruiter Warrior is a great digital tool. Um, I want that in your quiver uh, so you can expand your reach, right? Also, if we're locked down or something like we were last year, it's a way that you can continue to recruit without actually having to maybe expose yourself to something you don't want to. Um, you know, so we want to make sure we're attacking it from all angles, but we cannot do it without you. We can only make our goals uh, together. So uh, again, just a couple of reminders here. Uh, a couple of few years ago, we changed the dynamic. Uh, it used to be that uh, part life conversions to full life conversions meant something with respect to attaining goal. They don't anymore. I want you all to focus on new members. Of course, I would love and prefer that we sign up full life members from you know the get, right? $300 up front, be done with it, they're a life member forever. That's beneficial to headquarters, that's beneficial to you all, because now we have uh, additional uh, distributions from the life membership fund coming back to the chapter in perpetuity until that member passes. Um, so especially if you catch them young, that's huge, right? For the, the health of the chapter. Um, but uh, I want you to focus on new members, you know, and if, if somebody can't reach into their pocket and give you 300 bucks, that's okay. Get them on, signed up online for the $10 uh, installment payment. Um, if you are out there and you're one of these chapters and departments that do the, hey, you pay the first 20, I'll pay the second 20, or the chapter pays 20, the department pays 20, that's okay. Sign them up with a, an installment payment, 10 or 20 bucks a month. There's a bunch of variables that you can use on the, uh, on the online application. And then uh, just get those installment payments, payments going and let them know, hey, we're going to send in 40 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever it is towards your membership. Give us a spreadsheet with a check for the correct amount and we'll apply those individual payments. It's, you know, uh, we'll, we'll help you. We'll, we'll make it happen. I don't want you to lose that incentivization piece. And I don't want you to not recruit folks because, um, you know, you don't think that they can, uh, that you can participate in that way. So uh, one of the things that breaks my heart is, you know, we'll have uh, folks apply something like that and pay the first 40 for a new member, and then we never see that new member again. They have no skin in the game, right? So I would really uh, prefer that we make sure these prospects have skin in the game. And again, again, I'm gonna be repetitive. Uh, that's why we wanna push the credit card angle, okay? And I get some people just don't do it, you know? So. Uh, we've made some accommodation on the new membership application for that as well. But um, remember, your goal for your chapters and department is based on the hot list. So we get uh, a membership prospect file that we generate every year, essentially. And these are folks that have not been solicited by DAV headquarters. If they have, it's maybe been once. They haven't been drugged through the recruitment coals and been solicited 15 times and never, for whatever reason, decided to pull the trigger on membership. I want to give you good, viable prospects, uh, you know, that are uh, ready to have the good word of DAV proselytized to them, okay? Um, so unfortunately, we don't have a way to automate this list to you. Uh, Robin and the team do a great job of shooting this out once a year to the departments. Um, but uh, certainly, you know, we'll work with chapters if they call in and, and we want to make sure we get them uh, what they need for their jurisdiction, okay? Uh, but the goals are based on that hot list. So not all goals are going to be created equal, right? So a goal in uh, Waco, Texas, where there's a ton of ex-military, is going to be bigger than a goal in Rhode Island, right? So goals in Florida, California, those goals are bigger where there's a lot more low-hanging fruit than in the middle of Wyoming, okay? Um, so for our national goal, I really have to lean on uh, those places who, you know, have those condensed populations uh, to help drive a bigger portion of the goal. And they, you know, really work hard to, to do a great job for us. But um, if you're wondering why there's such a disparity in the goals, um, that's why. Now, there could be and there have been some chapters where there's nobody on the hot list. So in that event, their, their minimum goal is 10. That's how we do it. Okay, so the lowest goal, regardless of how new, how old the chapter is, whatever, uh, depending on the hot list, you're gonna have at least a, a goal of 10, okay? Um, so you can also use the membership list request form that's in the elected, or uh, in the members only section of DAV.org. 
Um, you can go in there, fill that out, and request any list that you want, a membership list or the hot list, whatever. Uh, just email it into the membership department, and we'll generate that and get it out to you. Uh, this is, all of this that we're doing is kind of an evolving process. You know, we did the same thing over and over and over again for 10, 20, 30 years, whatever it was. We really want to think outside the box. Uh, that's why I'm always eager to get ideas. Uh, me and Robert Graves always have conversations about, you know, what's working, what's not working, where we can tweak stuff, and I always appreciate that feedback. Uh, so again, you got my phone number here, you got my email address. Uh, I don't think there's anybody in here that would say I'm not responsive. Uh, so I love having that interaction. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Did I have a question back here? Uh, if I did, we'll, we're going to wait until just the end of the presentation. I promise I want to get to questions, believe me. Um, so it is an evolving process. Uh, so if you have recommendations, reach out and be patient with us as we kind of, you know, roll out some new programs and, and try to be innovative with what we're doing. You can also email us at membershippublic at davmail.org. Um, so I didn't want to talk about the customer relations management tool today. We had a seminar, it was standing room only on Thursday, uh, where we talked about that. Um, you know, what, the only reason I bring it up here is just to say, if there's something that you got from the old legacy membership system that you're not getting right now, just give us a call or email us at headquarters and we will to whatever extent we can, generate it and get it out to you in whatever format you need. Um, I don't want you to feel like you're on an island or isolated or anything. We've got your back. There's still some reports we're tweaking and some other things. Uh, so if we tell you no, it's not because we don't want to give it to you. It's just it's not right. It's not ready for prime time. But I think we've worked through the majority of those issues. Uh, but uh, I want you all to be excited about CRM. Uh, the product that you see initially is not going to be the finished product. We're just, you know, kind of getting the skeleton, the guts out there um, and get some basic functionality. Uh, incrementally, we'll roll out more and more access, more and more capabilities. Uh, once we user, uh, end user test everything and make sure we're quality assuring everything. Um, but it, it'll be some time before the finished product is actually out here. This is what happens when you replace a 30 year old system as well as other systems from, you know, five or six systems from four or five different departments, right? So we're all talking together now. I know when I look at a constituent in the system that they're a member and they're a donor and they're a volunteer, right? We didn't used to know that stuff. So it lets us talk to people differently, especially to the prospects. So it's gonna be great stuff and I want you all to be excited about it. So the hot list, um, I, I want you to keep that in your mind, hot list, hot list. You need to have your hot list, right, as a recruiter. Uh, so as a chapter commander or adjutant from the department, you get those hot lists and you divvy them out, okay? For the most part, all you're gonna have on the hot list, and we're working on enhancing this, but for the most part right now, all you're gonna have is a name and address. Occasionally, you might have an email address or a phone number if we develop the prospect through another mechanism other than what we get from the VA, right? Um, but uh, we are having chapters that are really leveraging their hot list are having a lot of success recruiting. Um, you know, you can look folks up online or in the phone book and try to get their number, um, you know, mail, send them a postcard. You don't have to send some big, huge, expensive stationery or something, just mail them a postcard and invite them out to a meeting. Um, give them a call if you can figure out what their phone number is. You know, maybe have an afternoon where you guys have a lunch and, and do some work to that end. Um, people are going to really think that this is odd, but visit prospects at their home. You have their address. Take an afternoon, make it a, a group event, go to lunch or something, and then go visit two or three homes of prospective members. It's been my experience that member prospects are much more amenable to turning over 300 bucks when they understand the value of what DAV offers, right? Um, so, you know, inquire about their claims. Are they getting to and from the hospital? Um, look for those LVAP opportunities. If you ask John Kleindienst right now about Volunteer for Veterans, what's the main thing that concerns you about Volunteer for Veterans? He will tell you without a doubt, and I've got a challenge corn for you if he tells you something else, that the number one problem with Volunteer for Veterans is he's got too many volunteers and not enough opportunities. He will tell that to you over and over again. Veterans are proud folks, right? 
we don't want to be perceived as needing help or being weak or whatever. But veterans need to serve veterans. We need that opportunity to serve. So if you know of somebody out there that you know uh, could use a hand, let's get them into volunteer for veterans. Um, look, this is a great opportunity. If you walk up to some prospect's house and their their uh, gutter is hanging off the house, and you know somebody can repair that, uh, you got somebody that does that for a living. Even there, you go. There's a volunteer for veterans opportunity, and, and invite them. To, to help you identify those types of opportunities. So again, you know, they're much more likely to become a member, um, you know, if we establish the value of DAV first. Uh, I talked a little bit about the new membership application. Um, so I want to be very clear on this so there's no mistake. And, um, in order for somebody to take advantage of installment pay payments, which we never used to offer on the membership applications until the last year or two, they need a credit card. So they can do the $10 a month and only the $10 a month with a credit card, okay? So if you can get somebody signed up that way, I'll take it. All right, that's good stuff. Um, just don't send in a membership application with a $10 bill, that doesn't work. You'll be getting a call from Robin, okay? <laughs> um, so, but we did resign, redesign a couple years ago the, the membership application. I think a lot of people still aren't used to seeing that there. So there is an option for credit card installments at 10 bucks a month. So I uh, wanted to just kind of point this out. The Ford X plan um, is offering additional 1000 uh, bucks through the end of September for DAV members. And so we got a quick little video to share with you here that you can share in social media, media to make your friends aware of it as well. So the, uh, the donation program that's mentioned there at the end, I think I heard reported, and if I'm wrong, I, I beg for forgiveness uh, up front, but I think it's over $3 million that that's garnered for DAV's programs and services. So uh, that's another great deal. Just, uh, you know, when you get your new Ford on the edge plan, turn the keys over to the, of, of the jalopy over to the car donation program, and uh, it's a win-win, right? Um, so I do have a bunch of news on the, um, member advantages program. So uh, we've decided to shift gears on this and it's gonna be hugely beneficial to all of you, the members. Um, so we were really kind of tackling individual uh, partners um, who were aligned with DAV's mission and appreciated the service and sacrifice of our members. Um, and at the end of the day, we just realized that uh, maintaining those relationships, all of the contractual obligations that go along with it, as well as uh, the limited bandwidth that we have uh, to advertise on their behalf and still maintain our nonprofit status, uh, really kind of had us boxed in a little bit here. So we, we looked for a way that we could enhance and expand the number of benefits that we offer to our members. And so what we came up with was access there at the bottom. Um, so I'm going to talk about that in just a second. These other, uh, you know, known name brands that we currently have uh, relationships with, a lot of those we're going to let expire because they're already in access. Okay, uh, we will still maintain probably a couple few uh, exclusive relationships, uh, but for the most part, your member advantages are now going to be through your My Deals app that you'll download from your phone. So essentially, if you go to the member advantages page at DAV.org, you have your membership number, you can click on that, sign up for it. You can, uh, once you get all signed up for it on DAV.org, you can install the app on your phone, your Apple or Droid device. 
The first time you sign in, you sign in with your username and password. Uh, usually your username is your email address. And um, you'll have access to literally thousands of vendors. And this is really the cool part um, that I like. So not only are you gonna have discounts at, you know, with retailers, with restaurants and travel, all sorts of good stuff. And still, a lot of that will send resources back to DAV to further fund our programs and services through the affinity agreement that we have. But um, it's gonna not only give you access to them big nationwide brands, but access does the footwork in getting discount, discounts with your favorite local brands. So if you visit Schmuckatelli's Pizza in your hometown, uh, check the app, Access might have a discount with them. You just click on it, pull it up, show it to them at the window, and they give you your discount. So a, a bunch of the stuff will not be exclusive to DAV, but it's gonna give you a wider breadth of, of uh, access to, uh, to uh, deals, not only in your community, but beyond as well. 1-800-Flowers uh, is the perfect example of what I'm talking about here. Uh, we're gonna let that deal expire uh, because they're already in access, and it's essentially the same discount that you were getting if you just went through the DAV Membership Advantages program. So good stuff there, so please don't hesitate to uh, install the app on your phone after you've signed up online with your membership number and take advantage of it. My wife and I have already used it a couple of times here since it just uh, was launched a couple days ago. So.